Are we live now? You're texting Matt, Deb? Fantastic. I'm going to just sent him. Okay. okay. You're on, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to our unprecedented city commission meeting this morning. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and staying at home. We will start the meeting with a uh, roll call. Mayor Brooke? Here. Commissioner Sarah? Here. Commissioner Vignola? Commissioner Simmons? Here. Vice Mayor Carter? Here. Manager Babinet? Here. City Attorney Hearn? Here. Great. Uh, as is customary, we'll begin the meeting with both a moment of silence followed by the pledge. I'm going to rise. I'd invite you all to do the same. Thank you very much. Commissioner Sarah, you are positioned beautifully. We'll let you lead us in the pledge, okay? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which, for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you very much. Uh, our next portion of the agenda is actually public comment. I'm not sure, Deborah, if we have any signed speakers. Mayor, actually, we do not have any signed speakers at all at this point. Okay, no problem. So we'll go right into resolution 2020-016, item number one on the agenda. Mayor, um, this resolution, I will read the title, the resolution of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs, Florida, authorizing and directing the city manager to arrange for electronic public meetings during periods of a declared public health emergency, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. And as we all know, this is consistent with the governor's executive order based on the pandemic that we have, 20-69. We have several ways in which the public can uh, attend and watch this, and we have put it on all sorts of our different links and, and messages, and uh, anyone can get on this Zoom Anyone can call the number uh, for Deborah Thomas, and we also have email addresses for people to to uh, contact us. So, anyone that's out there that wants to do that, um, those are out there, and feel free to do that. The, the phone uh, number and the email is being monitored. Um, so, having said that, consistent with the governor's orders, um, I would ask for a motion to approve that resolution as we move forward. So, I'll go ahead and ask for the motion. Motion. I move it. Second. Okay. Okay, moved by Commissioner Simmons and seconded by Vice Mayor Carter. Is there any discussion? Is there a way to put the number on the screen? Okay, well, we put forth that request to our technical guys. Like it says public comment, maybe the phone number. Yeah, so I, um, we'll go ahead and, and take the vote on that motion but then I want to have a little discussion about how people can potentially participate during this meeting. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries unanimously. So at this juncture, Frank, and uh, maybe you can ask staff, is there some way for um, maybe even questions to be asked or somebody wanted to share with us and maybe didn't know about how to do so in advance? Uh, it's a little bit unusual. We're going through this very unusual time to not have anybody uh, desire to speak to us. So is there a way to allow that opportunity still during this meeting? Yeah, so I would ask uh, Bob Kernow and Stephen Dyer to uh, give us an update on kind of how this platform is working and how uh, citizen engagement could be obtained through technology. So. Uh, Bob and Stephen, if you guys could uh, please give that uh, that update and that information. Thank you. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mayor Bob Kernow. The uh, technology platform that we're using, Zoom. Um, all of the information has been sent out through uh, communications and marketing in advance of the meeting. In addition, posted on the agenda that Deb posts uh, for uh, commission meetings. So it. 
is available on the internet. It's also available streaming on our CDTV. We also have published a call-in phone number, and we have also pu uh, published an email address that takes you to a public comment form that is monitored by the clerk's office. And that's how um, Deb is able to get information uh, back from the public uh, to the system. Could we reiterate uh, what that uh, phone number is, please? The, yes, the number, hang on one second. The number is 954-344-5900. And then, Bob, you said that there was an email address as well. What is the email address that people can email to? That's uh, www.coralsprings.org backslash public comment, Mayor. That's correct. So the link on our website takes you to the form for public comment that's filled out and that captures the uh, person's contact information as well as what they're uh, wishing to speak about, sir. Great. All right. Uh, any other questions about that from the commission or suggestions from the commission? And, and uh, Mayor, if I may, uh, Joy, I, I, I understand what you're looking for, maybe a banner to be put up with the call-in number. We'll, we'll work with the technical team to see if that's something we can accomplish for uh, either this meeting or our next meeting. That'd be great. Thank you. And, you know, uh, before we kick things off further, uh, and I'm sure everybody will be sharing this as well, Frank, but you guys are doing an incredible job. Uh, staying calm, staying informed, sharing the information, sharing a consistent message, uh, doing everything we can, can through the Safer at Home order to keep people at home and keep us all safe. Uh, I, I don't think we can ask for anything more from you and your team. And uh, thank you so much for your leadership during this time, Frank. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. And I, I, I will have some comments later on, on on all of that, but I do appreciate that. Thank you. You bet. So we are now on to... Uh, Actually, now we're into public hearings. For next thing on the agenda is the consent. It's resolution 2020-017, urging the release of funds. Yeah. Well, Mayor, that's a, a consent item. Um, uh, there's only one consent item, as you know. So we could talk about it real quick since, since it's just one item. It's unusual for consent to be just one item. And uh, we brought this up at our last meeting um, there are, uh, there's money owed to us um, from the state. Um, when we originally brought this up, it was $8 million. We have since received and actually came in at a couple different checks, a little over $3.6 million. Uh, so uh, that's wonderful. And so the resolution uh, for you to execute that I'm asking for the commission to approve recognizes that and recognizes that we also previously received 1.9. However, we're still owed about 4.4 and change um, now that it's, now that the, the item moved to about 3.6. Um, and this is simply uh, requesting and urging, uh, especially in, during these times, that this funding is owed to us. It's sitting there and we and we certainly uh, need the funding at, at, at this time. Um, and so this resolution would be sent up to the state. I know many of you elected officials, including uh, as well as uh, the city manager, have been reaching up to the state, and that's wonderful. And this is further indicating our 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 our, our need to, to to have this money. So I simply request uh, request to approve resolution 2020-017. Sounds very appropriate. May I entertain a motion? Heard. Moved by Vice Mayor. Second. Second by Commissioner Simmons. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries unanimously. Thank you, John. Thank you. Next is ratification matters. First up is ratification of emergency order dash uh, emergency order twenty twenty dash zero one facilities to report compliance. Mayor, Mayor what, I'm, go ahead, John. Yep. Yeah, I, what I'd like to do, Mayor, uh, and, and is to take all of the emergency order ratifications, um, which is three through items fourteen. And just briefly walk you through each one and just sure. yeah. okay that'd be great uh uh, uh mr babin something i'm sorry no i just wanted to uh just give an overview of of these emergency orders have all been signed um and uh these are the orders we're currently operating under and this is a process to ratify those orders that have been put in place under the state of emergency 
Yeah, thank you. So, so, so very uh, uh, briefly, uh, on March 13th is when uh, uh, the state of emergency was signed by the mayor, consistent with Chapter 19 of our ordinances and uh, Florida Statutes 252, which gives emergency powers to the city manager. Uh, on March 15th, the 2020-01, which the mayor referred to, um, was our first emergency order that we that we entered into, and it was consistent with the governor's executive orders on certain facilities to report their compliance, which is adult group homes, long long term uh, adult facilities, um, and there's a screening there where they uh, have to uh, inform us once a week that they're complying with the, with with the uh, with those orders. Um, number five, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, um, let me see here real quick. No, um, that's number three. I'm sorry. Number four is the um, uh, uh, this is further amending the regulations on housing for vulnerable po populations. So that is tied to number three, where we then requested that any employees or anyone uh, is getting their temperature check, and no one can just go into those facilities. So that further strengthened those protective me measures. Item number five, which is 2020-02, was, um, if we remember, that especially the first few days, a huge run on our shopping uh, uh, centers and supermarkets. And this uh, waived the requirement of when deliveries could be uh, provided to, uh, to our big boxes and, and other large uh, uh, supermarkets, uh, making it 24-7 that they could bring, bring items in. I think that was very helpful in alleviating some of the uh, scarcity issues. Um, items 2020-03, is the purchasing authority of the manager, where we waive the formal uh, requirements of the purchasing purchasing code for emergency needs that the the, uh, the manager always has for under forty five thousand. This was even for over forty five thousand, subject to ratification. Now the reason why we did this, and this was on March seventeenth, was at that time we were not sure what the governor would allow or not allow for virtual meetings. While we still have this order, this order would only be used if it was for for providing something very emergent. Uh, let's say there were some um, personal protective equipment that, that, that we were able to get now because of the scarcity of that, the manager would do that. But for now, moving forward with almost all our contracts that are non-emergent, they'll be coming before you as, as needed because we're now allowed to have the meetings that we're having right now. Um, item seven is 2020-04, and we extended the expiration of building permits. Um, and that's for 60 days. And that was done on March 18th. So um, we'll be looking at that again if we need to. Um, uh, item eight is our uh, restriction, uh, is 2020-05 restrictions on bars and pubs uh, and limiting, at that time, limiting uh, restaurants and, and their distances. Um, that, was, that, that was, as you all know, changed later on in our 2020-11. 2020, -11. Uh, 2020 uh, was the prohibition of price gouging. We had seen a little bit of that. We entered this, uh, informed everybody it would be a, a misdemeanor, and we had our officers out there enforcing and preparing to enforce, which helped uh, to keep that down. Item 2020, uh, emergency order 2020-07, related to the special magistrate, and that all regular code hearings uh, were canceled, um, and only health safety issues were being brought forward, and we're still doing that um, as of now. Um, uh, we may be moving forward, depending how long this goes, uh, but but right now we're doing that. Anything we do with the special magistrate would be virtual like this meeting. And we've provided some due process for that as well. 2020-09 was a closure of gyms and related businesses. 2020-10 um, was on the size restrictions for businesses providing uh, childcare and the strict regulations, the, uh, the, the, the washing and the distance requirements uh, were all in there. 2020-11 was our closure of businesses to the public that were deemed non-essential. Um, that was done on uh, uh, March 25th. As you all know, late Monday, and the order became public yesterday, the governor um, did a uh, essential business ordinance uh, that uh, really adopted the Miami-Dade uh, order. He did an order as well. This was the, the Miami-Dade order. We have gone through that. We, we have spoken. Um, with the governor's office. Um, Frank was very essential in helping us get right up to them. It was great. And we've gotten interpretations. And based on that, we are uh, uh, able to uh, uh, follow those guidelines uh, from Miami, Dade. Uh, John or Frank, on that note, do we have a summary uh, 
somewhere of what are essential and what are non-essential businesses in our city? So we, you know, this just came in again yesterday. So it lists, it's pretty clear the way it lists and we could certainly um, bullet point that, but it's all in there. And we are available, uh, Andrew Dunkeel, my office is, is the one that's been available. Everyone knows that the, it, when uh, the, the hotline gets called, if there's any question about it, uh, they call Andrew. If not, I take the, the phone call. So we're happy to assist. I, I know, for example, Broward County uh, asked you to, uh, to uh, contact your private lawyer if you have a question about it. We, we, we feel the obligation to let people know what it is. So we right. will. We appreciate that, John. Yeah, no, it's, it's our pleasure to do that. Um, so that was 2020-11, which again has been modified. And we, um, so we are sending out an, an, a, an order based on that modification that um, Frank, I believe you reviewed and approved last night and we're just gonna have, uh, we'll, we'll sign it. And part of that order also recognizes that this does, in addition to personal injury, that it causes in, uh, property damage injury, this pandemic, which um, is also helpful to the, the business community that has insurance uh, uh, for stop, stop, uh, stoppage of business because there's a property damage element to it. Uh, I, I do know one or two commissioners uh, uh, received questions about that and sent sent that to us, and uh, we have found the same thing. And by the way, New York City has found that as is other cities. So I think it'll be helpful to our business community as they look to get uh, um, take advantage of their insurance provisions. 2020-12 is our safer at home order. That was not affected by the governor's order. The governor's order affected businesses. This affects the uh, the, the movement of our citizens. The, the, so uh, it restricts the movement of our citizens other than for the essential business activities, um, which includes exercise and, 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 and uh, obviously going to your doctor, going to the grocery store, going to the pharmacist. But we, we, we're, we're certainly not looking for people just to be driving around and uh, um, going into non-essential businesses, which are closed under the Miami-Dade order as well. So all of these, um, it's been a busy time. I, I actually think, uh, um, Frank has, has uh, signed more of these than the entire city manager and community of Coral Springs in its history. And Frank's done it in three or four months. Congratulations, Frank. Um, Thanks. These have all been, as you know, put out to the public um, through press releases and, and many other, other manners. So I would ask, um, um, they all need to be ratified. And I just think it's, it's, it's the best way to do it during this emergency meeting is to list those, remind everybody of what we've done and then ask for a motion to approve items three through 14. Three through 14, the Correct. order. Okay. So I will do that. I'll ask for a motion to approve the orders, emergency orders three through 14, as indicated by our city attorney. I'll move to approve uh, the ratification um, of the executive orders, I mean, the emergency orders uh, three through 14. I second it. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there discussion from the commission? So uh, I just wanna highlight one of the uh, emergency orders, uh, a portion of it. So it's just to be clear for everybody, our city manager who's got incredible experience, uh, he is running our show uh, during this time. He is running the operations of the entire organization uh, and he is doing an excellent job. He's got lots of people assisting him in a great way. Uh, neither the mayor nor the commission run the city at this time or any time. So I know I get a lot of calls. Oh, mayor, can you allow me to do this? Can you allow me to do that? I can allow you or disallow you to do nothing. Uh, the orders are coming from our executive, our city manager, Frank Babinek, and here today we are ratifying these orders. And in regards to purchasing, if there was something that uh, we chose not to ratify, uh, those contracts in accordance with 2020-03 uh, would then immediately lead to a, a cessation of payment to the contractor. So every contractor that's doing business with, a, with us now through the city manager understands that it's possible we may not ratify it. I don't understand why we wouldn't ratify it. Uh, we have full faith in you, Frank. So I'm happy to put forward this motion uh, and approve. Any further dialogue about this motion? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? All right, carries unanimously. Thank you very much. We are now on to ratification of the franchise agreement for towing services, item number 15. 
Yes. Uh, so this is a, uh, the, the, these two towing companies, Emerald Transportation and Sal's we've had uh, for several years. Um, they have been doing a, a, a very good job. And so everyone knows that when there's a car accident, sample and university drive, the, uh, the, it's about an every other week, they, they, they switch off 24 seven, we'll call them, they'll get there, they'll, they'll, they'll remove it. Um, and so for all sorts of reasons, we need <clears throat> to have towing companies available 24 seven. We've checked with fire and police um, and, and uh, they have uh, said they have done a, a very good job. And therefore we're looking to um, enter into another contract with both of those through March 31st, 2025. This um, was signed by Frank because of the urgency of needing to have towing for the last couple of weeks when it would, would have expired. So Frank has signed it and we're asking for ratification. Great, may I have a motion for that? So move. All right, I, I heard Sean move it. Oh, moved by Commissioner Pignola, he came on, thank you. Yes, I'll second it. All right, seconded by Commissioner Sarah. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries unanimously. Thank you. Next, Thank you. we're on to policy formation and direction, item number 16, unleaded gasoline and diesel fuel. So, Mayor, this is, um, this is a, a co-op that we uh, enter into with other cities for all of our uh, diesel and gasoline uh, usage. Um, so the pricing on it is based on a, a very large quantities because there's multiple cities uh, that are are buying off of this contract. We've we've been doing um, uh, this type of uh, purchase for our fuel for many years. Uh, I've been very successful at it and uh, believe it it saves us uh, a, a good amount of money by doing so. Um, our purchasing team um, and our finance team have have. Uh, been part of this uh, co-op for for several uh, several cycles of this contract and uh, are recommending approval of this uh, this agreement. Great. May I take a motion? Move to approve. All right. Second. Motion by uh, Commissioner Bignola, seconded by Commissioner Simmons. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next, we're on to uh, Commissioner Communications, and the first one is Proclamation for Arbor Day. It's a request that the City Commission proclaim Saturday, April 25, as Arbor Day in the City of Coral Springs. May I take a motion? Move to approve. Moved by, by, by Vice Mayor Carter. Second. Second by Commissioner Simmons. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you. The next item is the proclamation of today as Census Day in the city of Coral Springs. May I take a motion? Move to approve. <laughs> I like the motion. Okay. <laughs> Seconded by Commissioner Simmons with the t-shirts. Uh, so here's the proclamation. Uh, whereas Article 1, Section 2 of the United States Constitution mandates that a census be conducted of the nation's population every 10 years with the next census scheduled for April 1, 2020, today. And whereas it is vital that all households in Coral Springs complete and submit a census form and every resident of our community counts and deserves to be counted. And whereas the census will determine how the federal government distributes $700 billion in funding. And whereas census data ensures fair congressional representation by determining how many elected congressional representatives and congressional districts that each state will have, and is predicted that we may gain an additional congressional district after this census, we're urging all of you, our residents, to participate in our census. Uh, as of yesterday, according to uh, former Senator Nan Rich, looked like only about 23% of households of Coral Springs uh, have participated. Uh, so we're urging you all to participate, and uh, we're hereby proclaiming April 1 as Census Day. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Today is officially Census Day in Coral Springs, so we're urging you to take a few minutes of your time to go ahead and fill it out. MyCensus2020.gov 
is one great way to fill it out. Thank you. Uh, it's, did I take the, yeah, I took the, uh, the motion. It's approved. Thank you very much, everyone. So next is uh, further communications. Why don't we start with you, Vice Mayor Carter? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I received the text from Dan Daly last night, which I'm sure maybe you guys did too. He said, if anyone is having uh, difficulties applying for employment assistance, that they should reach out to him with their uh, name, mailing address, and phone number. And his email is dan.daly, D-A-L-E-Y, at myfloridahouse.gov, and Florida is spelled out. His phone number is 954-778-3304. Also, um, I want to remind everybody that um, when Congressman Deutsch had his call on Sunday, that uh, Kathleen Cannon from the uh, United Broward United Way was on there, and she encouraged you, anybody who uh, is having difficulties, to reach out to 211 Broward before it becomes a crisis. Mm -hmm. and they are there to assist. And after that, just thank you for staying home so we can flatten this curve. Be well, be safe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, next up is Commissioner Larry Bignola. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Mayor. Um, I just wanna thank Frank, John, um, all our staff, our, our first responders, our, our water plant operators, everyone out there um, making sure that, that we could do uh, the things we, we enjoy to do, but just doing from home now. Um, but to, to know that so many dedicated employees uh, out there caring for our community and making sure that we're able to enjoy life from home. Um, we just want to, on behalf of our residents, thank them and uh, let them know that, that we appreciate that they're doing an amazing job for us. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much. Commissioner Simmons. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, uh, before I begin, I, I just wanna say thank you to, um, I know Jared Smith was on here earlier, uh, but Dr. Lai, uh, I wanna say thank you for uh, being on with us today. I know uh, your hands are, are super busy. Um, yeah, and I do have a, a quick question uh, for, for either one of you. I just. Um, curious, how are you all doing with your um, uh, your PPEs and stuff? How how are you, you guys doing right now? Because obviously, um, you know, most people are home now, and so they're looking at the news and they're seeing um, all the horror stories out of New York, and then you know more of the, the more popular uh, I won't say popular, but the the bigger cities um, where it seems to be kind of the epicenter in the states. Um, so, how are you all doing with your you know equipment, and and how are the nurses and doctors and everyone doing? Yeah, hi, good morning. This is Jared Smith, and I am here uh, virtually with Dr. Lai. Um, we are doing fine with our PPE. We have a three-month supply on hand, and we're expecting another larger uh, shipment here. Um, we are following the CDC guidelines uh, that are out there, so we are following droplet precautions, and uh, any individual uh, nurses or staff or caregivers that are in a potential positive patient's uh, room or a positive patient's room, they're going to follow the CDC guidelines that we have. So right now we're in good shape, um, but we are um, definitely looking for additional supply uh, resources with our procurement team. So uh, we're tracking that daily. Okay. Yes. Good morning, uh, Commissioner Simmons uh, and, and everyone else. But yes, we are also, you know, uh, employing our conservatory strategies, and basically, you know, with our N95 masks, we are able to kind of you know, cycle the use of them because they say like in three, four days in the paper bag, in the heat, you know, the viruses, bacteria usually kind of die off. So we are kind of being very cautious and, and you know, conservatory because we just don't know like, how bad the surge will get, how long it will last and how long our supplies will last. So we're just kind of taking it, you know, as a conservation as we can. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, and so I, I do want to say, you know, um, thank you to all of the healthcare professionals. Um, you know, I, I know uh, words, um, you know, aren't always everything, but uh, I do want to say thank you uh, for what you all are doing, you know, sacrificing, um, you know, your, your own health uh, for uh, providing care and treatment for others. Uh, you know, and even, you know, uh, you, you hear about, you know, healthcare professionals not going home or, you know, sleeping away from their family to kind of make sure that they keep their loved ones protected. And so I, I always 
uh, want to uh, make sure that I keep uh, those folks in, in our, our thoughts and, and our prayers and, and, and anything that we do, because these are, you know, uh, people out here that, you know, didn't expect this, you know, maybe, you know, uh, they wanted to take care of people and want to help people, but they never expected to be uh, battling a, a historic, uh, you know, virus, uh, a global pandemic. So uh, we want to make sure we keep um, that, that positive energy towards them. Um, uh, I also uh, want to say thank you, of course, to the staff. Uh, you guys have been very responsive. This is a very difficult situation. Um, you know, everything, we're still working out kink, still trying to uh, transition uh, to this online, you know, platform. And, um, you know, and so I know that it, it's come with its challenges, but you all are doing uh, a fantastic job and uh, making other cities very jealous. Um, you know, and then to the residents, uh, I want to say thank you. Um, you know, I know that, uh, you know, um, it's kind of difficult to adjust with us by participating in our commission meetings, but uh, a lot of you have been doing an excellent job of uh, texting us, messaging us, however you interact with us, you have been contacting us uh, consistently and just kind of being our eyes uh, and ears on the ground as well uh, and helping us uh, be better during this time period. And so uh, we're very appreciative of you all continuing to be uh, watchful and helping us um, you know, provide a better service to uh, to you, to the city, and to your families. And so uh, continue to reach out to us. Uh, you know, some of you have been uh, all times of the day. You know, um, I, I think that's the most uh, fascinating thing about this is that we're all going through this all at one time. And so we're all working together. And, uh, you know, I want us to continue to make those small sacrifices and continue to be a little uncomfortable so that we can get through this, uh, you know, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, you know, and while we don't want to rush the process, I know there's you know, a lot of people are antsy. We don't want to rush the process. We want to make sure this is completely clear uh, before we return back to our normal activities so that we can, um, you know, move past this. And so uh, I, I just want to say thank you to the residents. And uh, the last thing I want to say is that today is April 1st. And there are people who, um, for one reason or another, are going to have to make a lot of phone calls to uh, their landlords, uh, to either utility providers or anyone like that because of uh, the fact that, you know, we've been piecemealing uh, responses uh, to this uh, throughout the state. And so there are gonna be folks out there, hard working people who uh, in any other circumstance would pay their bills. They would make sure all this stuff is taken care of, but they no longer can because there are people losing their jobs. Uh, last week, unemployment numbers were at 3.3 million. I'm sure it's much higher now. Uh, we're even having troubles with our unemployment website as Vice uh, uh, Mayor Carter had uh, given you uh, Representative Dan Daly's information. Uh, and so there are going to be a lot of people hurting and struggling. And so, um, you know, I've been working with um, State Representative Chevron Jones, uh, State Representative Anna Escamani, uh, 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 Senator Oscar Brainin, and a few other people, uh, and working and trying to get the governor to issue a, a moratorium on, you know, rent payments and, and, and things of that nature. And it's not trying to get people a handout, y'all. It's just making sure that we do our part in helping folks during this crisis. Because again, we are all going through this. And to leave, um, you know, hardworking people up up to sometimes more powerful landlords uh, is a disservice. And so, um, you know, be mindful of that as we uh, continue to do our business and continue to enjoy the comforts that we have. So, um, you know, uh, let's let's just be mindful of that, y'all. And with that, um, I'll be done with my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Simmons. Uh, before we go to Commissioner Sarah, Deb, I wanted to just check, uh, did we hear from anybody during from the public during the portion of this meeting after public comment? Mayor, I'm monitoring and we do not have any callers. Okay, all right, very good. So on to you, Commissioner Sarah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As many of you know, I'm a pretty private person, but uh, COVID-19 really has my mind and my heart racing in a lot of different ways, because at least in my opinion, this might be the most defining moment and event in uh, my lifetime. And uh, since starting to work on this in mid-March as an educator, um, I want to share a personal story because I think there are a lot of people that may have gone through a similar incident that I did. Um, I'd like to say that I try to lead with a calm demeanor and, and just try to, um, let things play out, but model um, the leadership style that I think needs to be um, modeled. But, you know, even this caught me. I suffered a very serious anxiety attack on March 18th after working on this for about a week. 
my mind was racing, my heart was racing. There were a lot of things going through my mind, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of concern. And uh, I want to thank the people that uh, that helped me that night. That was uh, from the paramedics and the fire department, uh, Mark Myers and Del Castilla. Uh, we had uh, Anthony Diaz-Pazito uh, and uh, police officer Holtz. Um, I had to call 911. Uh, my heart was racing. I broke out into a sweat. You know, I thought I was having a heart attack. I'm 48 years old. I never experienced anything like that. The reason why I share that is because there's a lot of us going through some really difficult times because we're struggling on what this looks like. But the big thing is that um, we have to reflect. We have to prioritize. We have to really understand our role in this. And we all have a big role. We all have to do our part to really get through this because this is not just a one day event. This is not like 9-11 or some of the other tragedies that we, uh, we have gone through. This is one of those things where it's gonna happen and every day there's gonna be a new story. And it's gonna take some time. The reason why I wanted to talk about this for a few minutes is because I'm very proud of this community. I've seen some things that I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, just trying to get out and get some exercise. There's a lot of families walking, they're biking, they're working in your yard together. I see people doing stuff on social media where they're eating dinner together, playing games, they're reconnecting with their families, they're doing social networking with their friends. It really prioritizes and makes us reflect on what's going on in our life. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to stay calm instead of getting excited. Um, to help each other instead of turning an eye, uh, to give instead of being selfish and, and hoarding, which we've talked about with some of the supplies, but more importantly, to love and support each other instead of having, uh, you know, our differences and even, I hate to say it, but even for some of us, some hatred towards others. Um, I just want to thank the entire city staff. You've heard over and over again, the city staff has done an amazing job from top to bottom. That's the people in the trenches that are working the supply rooms that are at city hall, keeping it safe. Those are people at the water plant, people at the parks and rec to make sure that people aren't inappropriately going on our property, the police, the fire, the first responders, everyone. But then you got our city leadership that's done a phenomenal job. I mean, I've been incredibly impressed by not only the people that are in each of the departments, but even our top leadership. But it goes beyond that. We got our medical doctors, our nurses, our paramedics, the people that are in the trenches, that are in the hospitals, um, CEOs that we have. I mean, everyone is trying to do their part, but I wanna give a shout out to the people that I've been the most impressed with, that have been called to go to work, um, despite the fact that we got a pandemic going on. and. Uh, those are the people that are manning our restaurants that are helping us, you know, stay fed. Um, we're picking up and they've got gloves on and they're making sure that they're taking all the necessary um, steps to keep us safe. We've got people that are uh, working once again, our supply rooms that are getting everything out. We got businesses that have shut down what they've typically done and are making masks and, and then you know, doing that little things. Um, our mailmen are you know, waste management people that are taking our trash. I mean, they're putting themselves out there and, you know, it is a true team effort to get through this. And I'm just super proud of, of a lot of people, you know, a lot of different professions. There are a lot of heroes on COVID-19 and you know, we're just getting started, but we got to do our part. But I want to close by just saying, please, 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 please stay home. There's really no reason to leave your home unless you have to get some essential items or you are an essential point. We have the order, we need everyone to follow it. We need everyone to respect it because if we don't, our numbers will go up. And I don't wanna lose anyone that's not, that's participating on this call or beyond. Our residents are important to us. We wanna make sure that you guys are safe. You know, if you do have to step out, keep your social distancing, it's critical. I mean. I've seen a couple of instances where we haven't respected that. We've got to respect that. It's critical. And I want to close because COVID-19 is something that we don't have to fear or be afraid of, but we have to respect. And I'm going to go to our mayor's you know, sign up is for my report is that this is a true time where we have to have unity in the community. We have to come together 
and do what's in the best interest of each other while protecting and serving our residents, our city staff, and everyone above. Uh, I thank you. It's a tremendous honor to be on this commission. I'm very proud of uh, our leadership team that my other four uh, fellow commissioners. Um, there's a lot of people working 24 seven and uh, what's not, it's, we're, we, we're not in week one of this or two weeks of this three weeks. We were in this for the long haul and uh, we got to once again come together. So thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Sarah. I really appreciate your words. Uh, I know uh, Commissioner Vignola wants to share a few more words. I just want to reiterate that something that Commissioner Sarah said uh, to our residents. Um, and, he, you know, he shared vulnerability and something he experienced on March 18th that he never experienced that before. Uh, I can imagine out of our 132,000 residents, uh, Sean, there are at least another 5,000 residents that during this time are experiencing something similar for the first time. I had that same experience many years ago, unfortunately. Fortunately, we have the help we need right here in our community. So if you're feeling anxiety, pressure, or something like that, we urge you to seek the help that you need and not just hold it in and feel more pressure. Uh, so before I have all of my other comments, Commissioner Vignola, go ahead. Please share with us your other thoughts and comments. I just wanted to, uh, you know, um, um, Commissioner Sarah was talking about, you know, seeing people out there riding their bikes and different things. And, and uh, kind of an interesting thing that we've participated in a little bit uh, here in my house is, is uh, Zoom birthday party. So we have my niece's birthday party the other day. And last night, my, my middle daughter, Ava, turned uh, 13. So we had a couple of Zoom birthday parties with all the different families. And if you could imagine, we tried out with the Cuban side of the family first to cut the audio down. And then um, when we went to the Italian side, it, it all crashed anyway. But I um, want to wish my daughter a happy birthday. And then um, my wife also has a birthday coming up. And that's kind of been tradition since I've been on this commission is to wish everyone a happy birthday around that time. And even in these times, we still got to celebrate uh, all the wonderful things that we are fortunate, that, fortunate enough to have. So and um, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So I, on that note, uh, I'll be celebrating my birthday uh, this Friday. Uh, part of my celebration will be with residents if you need me. Uh, I'll be available on my cell phone between 3 and 4.30. Uh, my number is 954-494-9872. And I'm actually going to have office hours by telephone uh, every Friday in April between 3 and 4.30. Uh, you can coordinate through Luam uh, here at City Hall. You can text me directly as well. Um, you know, one of the things I started, uh, aside from my role as mayor, I started last March. Uh, it's called the Mental Wellness Networking Alliance, and I do with many, many people here in the community. Uh, we probably have had over 150 people involved, maybe at least 30 uh, mental health professionals. Uh, we're continuing our meeting uh, every first Wednesday of the month. Uh, we're now doing it virtually. Our first effort will be tonight uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, so you can look at Facebook. Um, the page is called Mental Wellness Networking Alliance. You can look at my personal Facebook page, Scott Jonathan Brook. You can text me about it. Uh, what we're talking about tonight is how we're going to get through and beyond this pandemic uh, mentally, socially, um, and focus on mental wellness. So you know, there are a lot of things that a lot of people are doing in the community to cooperate and collaborate with our safer at home order um, and having fun and staying safe. And that includes some families biking. I see many people walking in the neighborhood, uh, saying hello to one another from more than six feet away. And one of the reasons, thank God and uh, thank our city that our crime rate is flat at this time is we're having a lot of cooperation and collaboration from our citizens. You know, people have asked, does the city have a curfew? And I recognize, no, we don't have a curfew, but with the safer at home order, there's no reason for about 95%, maybe a little bit more to be out after 9 p.m. So remember, in the safer at home order, it's okay to go to an essential job. It's okay to grab takeout from a restaurant. It's okay to go to your pharmacy, uh, to the supermarket for essential needs, uh, but it's not okay to just go visit a friend and say hello and hang out uh, because if they're not in your neighborhood, you're going out for some other reason. So one of the reasons we have, I think, 
the sense of calm uh, that I feel and sense throughout our city is a lot of cooperation from residents and it comes from the top, it comes from you, Frank. Uh, Frank, your leadership style, your calmness, your demeanor, you're focused on solutions, on facts, uh, as well as your top team. Um, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of the whole commission, you know, probably the whole city. Frank, we couldn't be in the hands of a better leader than we are with you. You are, you're amazing, Frank, and uh, so is your team. Alex Falcone, you're doing an incredible job. Dr. Antebi, uh, Lynn, uh, in charge of marketing and making sure we have a consistent message that's helpful for us to have unity in the community. Uh, my team, you know, our colleagues, uh, Vice Mayor, Commissioner Vignola, Commissioner Sarah, Commissioner Simmons, you're doing an incredible job being in touch with people, you know, sharing, you know, none of us are scaring. Um, so it, it's really, it's an honor to work with everybody on the team. Uh, and it's an honor to be here and, and see the custodial staff, you know, just wiping things down here at City Hall. And, you know, we're, we're wearing the mask when we're here at City Hall. So uh, from, you know, the top to every resident, I see a lot of co collaboration and cooperation. So I just want to thank everybody. Um, a few more things. I want to reiterate a couple of things that other commissioners have said. One, Vice Mayor Carter uh, talked about how you can get a hold of our state representative. So again, that's Dan Daly. It's dan.daly, D-A-L-E-Y, at myfloridahouse.gov. Another important number that we've been sharing for COVID testing information. And by calling this number, you're able to get information of whether you might need to be tested and where the testing centers might be. And that's 866-779-6121. And I wanna make sure it's actually, let me just double check on that, that is 6121. And while I'm looking, uh, does any other commissioner have any other comments? I have one, Mr. Mayor. Go right ahead. Uh, again, this question is for um, uh, Dr. Lai and Mr. Smith. I was thinking about this. Um, there have been starting to come more reports coming out saying that uh, the CDC is recommending or they're just trying to figure out if they should recommend that uh, people generally wear um, uh, generally wear the masks now. Is that, um, can you speak to that a little bit? Like, because before it was don't wear the mask unless you're sick or you have symptoms, but now it's looking like they're trying to say everyone should wear it now when they're out in public. So, uh, Dr. Lai, I, Frank, do you want to share first? Yeah, and then and then Dr. Lai and Jared can jump in. I, I was looking at that last night, Commissioner Simmons, and and the one thing I will tell you is is wearing a mask doesn't doesn't hurt as long as you don't drop your guard. And that's the biggest concern that's out there is, is that people, uh, we don't want people to think just because they have a mask on, they're now fully protected. The mask is in addition to social distancing and, and hygienic uh, practices. So Dr. Lai, uh, you know, please add to that as you would. No, Frank, I totally agree with that uh, as far as not letting your guard down. But I think in order to kind of get a real strong hold on this and for us to really try to flatten that curve here, we had to do what we can, you know, the social distancing has been encouraged, but, you know, I think the more people that do wear masks out there in general, you know, if they're not abiding by the social distancing, like, and it's just so prevalent everywhere right now to COVID, you just don't know when you will get exposed, you know, like uh, if someone just happens to just sneeze in front of you out of the blue, you know, you can be putting yourself at risk. So any, any little bit of mask, you know, whether it be just a surgical mask, you know, I would, I would definitely want to have that, you know, uh, if I kind of ran into that situation. So I, I do think it's a good recommendation. It, you know, it's just trying to, you know, get a stronghold on this so we can kind of limit the numbers, limit the spread, because as you see, every single day, we're setting records in the U.S. for like number of deaths. And, you know, we, we're skyrocketing. Uh, within the states, you know, within the country, and um, we had everything we can. So I, I think it's, it's a good recommendation uh, from the CDC. And, you know, as far as, uh, you know, our civilians taking it to the next step, you know, protecting everyone else and trying to limit the spread. And if I have a follow-up. Sure. Sorry. Go ahead. And thank you for the, thank you for that response, um, um, Frank, Dr. Lai. Um, 
my I guess my follow up would be, um, and I, and I, maybe it's because they're actually in the hospital, but you know, I from what I understand, nurses and doctors they're not supposed to reuse their masks. Would that uh, apply to uh, you know civilians? Uh, Commissioner, are you saying don't use our masks that we've used in the hospital outside? Well, I, and, 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 and please help, you know, uh, add to or correct what I'm saying. But I thought it was, I thought one of the issues that were happening is that you're not supposed to reuse a mask once you've worn it, uh, you know, once in an area that had, you know, possible, uh, you know, possible uh, COVID, uh, you know, infection or in the area. So I guess what I'm asking is, uh, would that also apply to, you know, me walking around with the mask? Should I? reuse that same mask every single day well i think that's a little bit different like if we were taking care of a a, a pui a person on you know a suspected covid or someone that was definitive covid i mean due to ppe uh, limitations across the country you know cdc has kind of uh lessened up their restrictions in, in saying that you know as a physician if i use my n95 and we covered it with a surgical mask then if you didn't get that N95, you know, grossly contaminated, if you had a face shield on top of that as well, then potentially you can kind of recycle that mask, but only trying to keep it with that same patient. You know, we'll, we'll keep it in a paper bag, we'll keep it there. But yeah, as far as like, um, I would never recommend a healthcare worker to use a mask that they've used in the hospital setting outside in, in, in the public. You know, I definitely would not recommend that. And, but as far as uh, civilian use, I think, you know, you kind of, you you know, with, with the social distancing and, you know, if you didn't have anyone like coughing or, or sneezing directly around you, you know, I think it's pretty safe to kind of reuse that mask, you know, still keeping it, you know, in a paper bag, you know, uh, I think that's good practice. But I did want to say, Commissioner, thanks for the recognition, you know, uh, what you did mention there about the healthcare workers and you know, I'll try not to take too much time, but um, it's reality, you know, and what you mentioned, it's, uh, you know, we've all been doing it. A lot of my colleagues, like, you know, I sleep in a separate bedroom than my family. I decon outside before I come into the house, you know, um, and it's reality. You know, your kids will say, hey, what's going on, daddy? You know, like, why can't you sleep with us anymore and stuff? And, you know, it's, uh, it's a way to protect us, protect the family, protect everyone else. And, um, we're seeing sicker and sicker patients, you know, coming in already, you know, um, as an emergency physician, you're, you're trained, you're used to doing life-threatening procedures all the time, intubating sick patients. And when we had one yesterday, you know, it's just like, you always get that adrenaline rush, you know, uh, but you all, you take it to a separate step, you know, you, you plan to protect all staff. We limit staff in the room. We take extra precautions to make sure there's no aerosolization of, of the of the particles during the procedure. So everything went very smooth. You know, we, we have good plans in place. And, you know, I just feel like it's our job to protect the staff and protect our patients. But, you know, it, it kind of hits you hard with this COVID. Like you said, we don't fear it. You know, it, it gives me a, a big adrenaline rush like anything else. But it hits you hard when the patient in the last few minutes is, is looking you straight in the eye and saying, you know, am I going to die? I feel like I'm going to die. You know, that just kind of, I can imagine all my other counterparts across the country when we're getting these sick, sick COVID patients and, you know, they can't breathe and we're trying to do everything we can. And, you know, you, you're probably the last one that's going to be talking to them, you know? Uh, so we, we try to do what we can and, you know, sorry to take so much time, but just trying to give you a glimpse of like our, our reality, you know? Well, thank you. Like, thank you for sharing. I mean, these are the stories that we need to hear. Um, and, and, you know, for you to be so open and to share that, that, I mean, you have no idea how incredible and how appreciative we all are uh, to hear that, uh, you know, from a point of view. I mean, you know, most of us on this call, we just get to sit and watch the stuff on TV, but to actually hear it. And this is right, you know, in our, in our city. Um, you know, thank you. Really, thank you for sharing. Agreed, Commissioner. So I do have a couple of questions for staff. Um, I was on a call with uh, many other mayors across the nation and Greg Fisher out of Louisville talked about them doing a fundraiser within five days. Uh, they had raised five and a half million dollars for different needs in their community. 
Uh, and I believe we're working on something along those lines. Uh, Frank, are you able to share at all if we are uh, where we are with potentially doing something along those lines? Mayor, if, if I could, um, I have a, I have a, a, a brief uh, that I'd like to go through with the commission and the community, and we'll hit on some of that. Uh, Alex, okay. uh, Lynn, um, uh, John, and, and uh, our, our chiefs are going to share in, in that brief, um, along with, with uh, Jarrett and Dr. Lai, if they have anything to add. But if I could go through that brief, we'll hit on some of that, and then that might actually spark some other questions for the commission as well. Great. And then I'll just ask the one other question. We'll come back over to uh, Commissioner comments. I now have at least two more. Uh, one is, the other one, Frank, is are we able to potentially designate uh, one person, uh, potentially two, uh, to help our small business owners in town uh, through this crisis? And so now I'll turn it over to you, Frank. Yeah, and, and I'll answer that question. And then Christy, uh, if she wants to add anything uh, after the brief, she can as well. But uh, we, we talked about this yesterday. Um, so every morning, uh, every morning, Saturday and Sundays included, uh, staff is, is meeting to uh, give briefs and updates and go over our plans and, and to share information. Uh, and that, that's, that's been happening uh, seven days a week for the last several weeks. Um, so uh, we, we've asked Christy to put those programs in place and we're dedicating uh, staff that uh, normally wouldn't work under our economic development office. And we're dedicating those, those folks to Christy. So she has the resources to be able to do exactly what you're saying. And she is working with the chamber to come up with that program. Right. And uh, later on in my brief, she can, she can come on and, and tell us what that looks like. Um, the one, before I start, uh, Abe, you know, everybody knows Abe Friedman, Abe, young man that comes to every commission meeting. He actually called uh, the office yesterday and apologized and wanted me to pass along to you guys uh, that he couldn't make the commission meeting today uh, because he's in, you know, obviously he's a, he's a, a, um, a little older, so we, we don't want him getting exposed to anything. We want him staying at home, but I thought that was kind of uh, uh, funny and would give you guys a laugh that, that he actually uh, wanted you guys to know that he's sorry he couldn't make a meeting today with, with everybody. That's nice. Um, yeah. So 97 years old. How old? 97. Uh, wow. He's an amazing person. Okay. So, um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm good. So as you're aware, you know, we're working under state of emergency guided by several emergency orders that we went over earlier today. Um, the, the safer at home order is probably one of the most uh, paramount orders of, of all of those because it provides for that social distancing that we've been talking about, the isolation we've been talking about. And, and people ask, well, what does safer at home really mean? And what it means is you stay within your household. That means your property, that means the people you live with, if you're going to exercise, don't inter intermingle different households, you're staying within your household unit and you're not exposing uh, from household to household. Um, the level of, of cooperation and, and caring uh, in, in our community has been extremely uh, impressive. The way the community has been handling this unprecedented crisis is, 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 you know, I'm very proud of our community for, you know, for the most part, we've been doing everything that we should be doing and our community is doing everything they should be doing. And, and together we have to work through this. So I'd like to really say thank you to our community and keep up the great work. Don't let your guard down. We have a long way to go here. Um, we're, we're in the beginning stages, but keep, keep working hard to making sure we're meeting the goals set forth. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the staff, the men and women that serve our community in so many different capacities within our city, within our organization, are dedicated to looking out for the community and making sure that safety, health, and wellness are at the forefront of everything we do. Every decision we make, every program or process we put in place is, is in consideration of safety, health, and wellness for our community and the community members. Um, the hospital is doing an incredible job. Um, you know, we're in constant contact with with Dr. Lai, Jarrett, and Allison. And if, if we come across a vendor that we think could help them, we send it their way. Their processes they put in place are, are, are protecting our staff 
uh, as well as their staff and the community. Um, Jarrett, you guys are doing an amazing job. Dr. Lai, you guys are doing an amazing job. Keep up the great work and we look forward to keeping up the partnership. I'd like to say thank you to the commission for your leadership during these very trying times. Um, you guys are providing the leadership and in, in, in everything we need to do our job. So we truly appreciate it. And, and John and your staff are, 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 are doing amazing work. Uh, and we appreciate, appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, I cannot thank in, in the commission and I can't agree with you more. The commission uh, um, <clears throat> touched on this before. Uh, and, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, the, a job being well done. It's because of all of the great directors uh, and, and, and members throughout every department within this city uh, that, that what is getting done is getting done and they are doing a great job at it. Um, people are not working in their normal environment right now. They're being reassigned to things they normally wouldn't do. And, and I have to tell you, our staff is, is stepping up to the plate and just doing a tremendous job. And, and I'm very, uh, very proud of, of, of all of them. Um, as the governor stated, 60% of the cases that we're dealing with right now are in South Florida, mostly being in Miami-Dade and Broward. The numbers are still on the rise, like Dr. Lai said, we're, we're that, that the, the curve is still, still heading straight up. Um, and we expect these numbers to peak in South Florida sometime uh, in the beginning to middle of May. We need to remember that we, we have a ways to go. We need to remain vigilant. We need to remain diligent in keeping the number of cases as low as possible. Um, you know, Dr. Lai shared with us how, you know, the, the pain that some of these patients go through when they come in. And if we can keep one person from having to go through that, one family from having to go to that, all the sacrifices we're making are well, well worth it. The sacrifices you are making will make a difference, are making a difference. Without these measures, our current cases uh, and future cases would be much higher. Um, we'll never really know the true results of all of the, uh, the, the effort and hard work that's being put in uh, community-wide. We don't, there's no way to know what those numbers are, are going to relate to, but I can tell you they are making a difference and they will continue to make a difference. Um, if we weren't doing this, the, the number of people that uh, will or would have succumbed to this virus would be, would be higher. And, and I feel very confident in saying that. Uh, the best thing you can do is distance yourself, isolate yourself, and follow the very strict hygiene regimens that, that are out there. And, you know, there's a lot of reports out there now that are saying 80% of this virus exposure is people touching their face. Um, you have no idea how many times a day you touch your face. And, and that is the most prevalent way that, the, and Dr. Like, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, but that is the most prevalent way that this virus has spread. And, and one of the things about wearing a mask, if you're wearing a mask, it reminds you that you're going to touch your face because you have to move the mask to touch your face. So please, please, please uh, make sure you're paying attention to, to, to not doing that. Remember who you're doing this for. And in addition, well, we ask you do it for your community, your medical professionals, and your first responders. Those that are on the front line need your help. We're all in this together. Um, don't, you know, do this for yourself, but do it for the others as well. Um, I know we're always interested in the numbers. As of this morning, the state had uh, 67, a little over 6,700 cases. Broward County has surpassed the 1,200 mark. Um, and Coral Springs uh, is, is dealing with uh, roughly about 40 uh, cases under investigation right now. Um, and those numbers are what we know. I guarantee you that those numbers are higher because of the uh, lack of testing that has been done. There are more cases out there. They may be asymptomatic or not having a, as much of an issue. Uh, and that's why it's so important to continue to social distance. The city's EOC is activated. Um, we are activated virtually. Uh, all of our meetings are being done through technology. We are limiting contact with each other the most we possibly can, but we are fully activated. We're working with an incident command structure. The ICS team is looking at this event in three stages and is planning. The planning is cons constant for short-term response, mid-term mitigation, and long-term recovery. We have teams working on all of that and we will continue to work in, 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 in those areas. Um, in a minute here, Lynn's gonna go over all of the resources available that are out there, um, what we're doing to get all the information out there, what all the important phone numbers are, 
uh, all the different uh, areas that you can go and and get help. But at this time, I would like Alex to jump in and just um, uh, tell us uh, what you would like uh, us to know that maybe I didn't cover, Alex. Thank you, Thank Frank. You, Frank. I appreciate that. Um, so a couple of things that we wanted to hit on was the outreach that we've taken for our ALFs and other vulnerable populations. Um, we did partner with uh, Florida Department of Health to speed up the resource request process for the ALFs and nursing homes in our city. Um, so the Florida Department of Health had a ambulance strike team, which visited uh, each of the ALFs around the area. It inspected to make sure that they were complying with the state and governor's orders. And then they asked them if they needed any additional resources. Um, we worked with the Department of Health. Those supplies were delivered. We delivered uh, to 38 ALFs in the city. We delivered masks, hand sanitizer, gloves, um, the specific supplies that they requested from the Department of Health. So I wanted to let the commission know about that. In the event that any of our ALFs or nursing homes do need additional supplies, they can request those uh, directly through the Florida Department of Health or if they need assistance, the city has a team that's actually being assigned to that. So any of those uh, ALFs or nursing homes can email csfd at carlsprings.org, csfd as in the Carl Springs Fire Department at carlsprings.org, and we will have staff assist them with getting additional supplies if needed. Um, and, and with that, we ask that you let us know if you need help ahead of time, not when it's an emergency and you've run out. Um, we're seeing, you know, a couple week delivery time for most of these supplies. So, you know, we need to know up front a couple weeks out if, if, a, if a facility is going to run out of supplies. Um, and, and then to hit on that, the Department of Health has been uh, operating ambulance strike teams to look at these facilities. Uh, they also have epidemiologists and, and investigators out. What they're trying to do is identify clusters of cases. They're trying to investigate how this is spreading so that we can better uh, respond to it and we can prevent further spread of the disease. So we're continuing to work with them on that. Um, our leadership physically met with, with a lot of our senior communities. We met with the leadership at Park Summit, St. Andrews Towers, Country Club Towers, to provide them with additional guidance and, and try to support them. So if there are any communities in our city that would like additional support, direction, guidance, um, we're here to help with that and we'll, we'll continue to focus on that. Um, with that, Frank, I, all, all my other points were, were covered pretty thoroughly by, by yourself and the commission. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Alex. Jared, um, you and Dr. Lai have anything uh, further you'd like to share with the commission or the community? Um, yeah, one thing that I'd like to like, let you know on a positive note is Broward Health is able to obtain the, uh, the FDA recently approved um, technology for uh, COVID testing. It's a system that is by Abbott. Uh, our Abbott Labs. We should have that system here on Friday, and then we'll go through a series of validation tests to make sure that it's calibrated appropriately. So we're hoping that we'll be able to have uh, that testing up and running next week. Uh, that provides a 15-minute um, result for a positive or a negative study. So I think that's going to make a huge difference for our, our patients that are coming in uh, into the hospital that need uh, more timely results. Right now, the results are still taking give or take about a week when we go out to the commercial lab. So uh, we appreciate all of uh, your cooperation and collaboration as well. It's an incredible team working with EMS and police and uh, emergency management. Um, you know, um, you know, Commissioner Sarah, we're here, we're here as well. We, we have to uh, lean on each other. We need to stay strong. We've got an incredible, uh, an incredible community, incredible caregivers. Uh, and we'll get through this together. Uh, but we appreciate everything that the city is doing as well. And if there's anything we can do, just reach out to us. We're here. Uh, Frank, uh, you're, you're tremendous as well, always giving us information about potential supplies or testing uh, and things that you're seeing out in the community. So we appreciate everyone and, and all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do have a quick question on the, the Abbott test. Um, I know that there's some tests out there that either do a positive or a negative. And then there are some out there that'll do a positive and negative and then tell you if you've had it and now have antibodies to it. Does this test do that as well? Yeah, no, I believe it does confirm whether or not you have uh, the antibodies. It's, um, uh, Dr. Lai, what, what do you call it? It's a PCR test. So it's a true viral uh, study. Uh, so it's a much more sophisticated test than, than what we are seeing out there from some of the point of care uh, testing that is available. 
and it has a high uh, reliability rate right now. Okay. I had a question for Dr. Lai. Can I yes. ask? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is it possible to have the virus without having a temperature? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think they're saying like maybe on presentation, a lot of times it, it may be only be about like 45%, 40, 45% that patients will actually have a fever that come in. So I, I've seen a bunch already and not everyone does have fever. You know, I, I can tell you the most common complaints are usually like, you know, starts with a sore throat, then like a little dry cough, headaches, you know, they get some body aches. Then the fever usually kicks in a few days later. And then, you know, by week two, by day seven or eight is when they start getting like increased cough. And a lot of times they may not even complain of shortness of breath at that time when the virus is already kind of attacking the lungs. Um, you know, they've said that patients could come in with a low oxygen saturation, may perhaps even in the low 90s, and they may not even sense the, the shortness of breath feeling yet. So that, that's where it becomes very kind of, uh, you gotta be very suspicious and, and vigilant about your history taking. You know, I know some patients are complaining about, you know, oh, loss of appetite is a big one, loss of taste, loss of smell, um, diarrhea has been a frequent complaint now as well. So we, we just really have to take it, you know, as any, any patient, could potentially be a COVID, it makes it more difficult for us because we have to kind of consider like, hey, if I don't isolate this patient from the start and protect our staff and say this person came in, we've had several cases where they'll just come in with like lower abdominal pain, but then they'll, they'll say, oh, I've had this cough for about a few days too. So then you're like, wow, you know, I'm working this patient up for appendicitis, but she's had this cough. If I don't isolate her from the start, if, if I just send her to CAT scan without, you know, any mask or, or anything like that, then, you know, you're at risk of, of exposing a lot of healthcare workers. So that's the dilemma we have, you know, it's, it's trying to, you know, mitigate the exposure, but also like thinking in the back of your mind, you know, we have to kind of be careful with our PPEs and not overuse things too. So you know, and, and then if you are to use a CAT scan machine on a uh, person under investigation or a COVID patient, there's a whole big cleaning issue that, that has to take place afterwards. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of things to kind of consider in our minds uh, taking care of these patients. Thank, Thank you, Doc. You. Lynn, um, you want to give your uh, PIO and communications update, uh, anything you would want to share with the commission or the community? Absolutely, Frank. Good morning, uh, City Manager Babinick. Good morning, Mayor and Commission. Uh, I did want to start this briefing with some information. My team has been updating me while we've been um, live for the Commission meeting. Uh, oftentimes, information is changing rapidly, so I think this is important information for our residents. The C.B. Smith Park location, you now have to be pre-screened through a phone call. Uh, you have to keep calling at this point. They are at capacity, but that number is 954-276-4680. So again, don't just go to C.B. Smith Park. Make sure you call this number if you believe you're experiencing symptoms and need to be tested. 954. Yeah, you can repeat the number. 954-276-4680. And Mayor and Commission, obviously, this is information that we're continually updating on our website. I cannot stress how valuable uh, that is. We are, we are updating continuously throughout the day. That is coralsprings.org. Again, coralsprings.org. Our, our call volume in the call center, and our call center number is 954-344-1001, has been moderate. Uh, we've had about 30 calls since yesterday. Uh, we believe our actions to better explain the safer at home and the continued communications on multiple platforms are alleviating the need for people to call in. Uh, the majority of calls are to report non-essential business compliance. Um, and we do want to remind residents today that if you know of a business uh, that you would like to report, you can do that online. And again, that's at coralsprings.org. All of that information is easily accessible because we are in emergency mode. Um, our senior communication postcards, which I mentioned during the last emergency commission meeting, 
uh, were provided to the U.S. Postal Service this past Monday. They should be arriving in uh, the mailboxes of our residents 16 and older by the end of this week. Uh, we continue to provide a daily recorded message on our Z senior VIP line. That number is 954-345-5001. The purpose of that phone call and the purpose of that message and that recorded line is specifically to provide those, uh, we talked about Abe Friedman earlier, people who might not use technology but would like to know the updates of what is taking place uh, daily in the city of Coral Springs. We continue to update that every morning at 9 a.m. Uh, most important for seniors, uh, we've shared valuable information about the Aging and Disability Resource Center of Broward uh, and their ability to provide frozen meals in two-week supplies to the senior community. The number to register for that is 954-752-7244, and that is at extension 125. I just remind residents who are in our senior community, be patient. Uh, you will have to take a brief questionnaire and it does take up to two to three days to start receiving your meals. We have updated senior hours uh, for shopping on our website and included information about how to register for delivery services. Our goal is for families and neighbors to assist in setting up delivery for seniors and the homebound so they do not need to leave home. Uh, while the PIO communications section of the ICS structure is in place, um, we are working on new creative solutions to communicate and we will be rolling out uh, new information towards the end of the week. Today, we're excited to push out our census video in honor of Census Day on our main city page. We'll be posting our first reading with an SRO video on the police page and we'll be hosting a Facebook gardening segment on Coral, Play Coral Springs. We are providing important reminders throughout the week, like household hazardous waste collection updates. Uh, it's important for residents to know we are no longer collecting hazardous waste at the transfer station. The station remains open for non-hazardous waste Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays from 12 to, to 5 p.m. I want to remind our residents, especially our business community, the business hotline is 954-344-5772. And if you believe you have symptoms or you have questions regarding the COVID-19 virus, uh, I ask that you call 954-357-9500 and reserve our non-emergency number for police and fire communications. That's all I have now, City Manager. Thank you, Lynn. And then, Mayor, the last uh, the last update I would I would ask for is uh, see if Chief Perry can just give us an update on uh, from his perspective and, and what the community can do to help uh, you know our police department uh, achieve their goal of keeping our community safe um, out there. Thank you, and thank you very much, Lynn. That was very informative. Okay. Good morning, all. Um, from the police department's perspective, uh, our city, like most around us, are experiencing a drop in crime, which is good, and, and that's typical of uh, situations like this. Uh, I do want to tell you that I have noticed, since our roads are less congested and we have less traffic out there, that speeding is starting to be a little bit of an issue. People don't have uh, vehicles obstructing their way, and I know they're going a little fast, and I am concerned that, you know, that will lead to a rise in, in accidents and serious injuries. And, you know, the, the goal of this is for everybody to come out safe and secure, not just of the uh, pandemic that's going on, but uh, everything else around us. So, you know, please watch what you're doing. I, I want everybody to understand that our staffing levels are fine. Um, you know, we are out there. We will take action when we see, uh, you know, violations. So please, help us, you know, help you and help us keep the community safe. Uh, we would encourage everybody to uh, adhere to the safer at home policies. They are the best policies. If you don't need to be out, please stay home. There's no need for uh, you to go out and put your, your health or, or your family's health at, at risk. So, you know, please adhere to those and only go out when absolutely necessary. Um, I would like to commend the cooperation between all the departments. 
Uh, you know, everybody in senior staff has, has been fantastic. Emergency management, obviously us working with the fire department and, you know, uh, our partners over at the hospital have been tremendous. I haven't had uh, or heard of any negative uh, experiences. We're all in this together and we're all working together towards the same goal. Uh, so I'm very pleased with the way that's going. Uh, and lastly, I would like to thank uh, Frank for his leadership and the city commission for their support. Uh, without all of that, none of the other things that we've been able to accomplish occur. But, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about where we are from a safety and security standpoint. And, uh, you know, as long as we just keep it together and keep moving in the same direction, we'll get through this and we're all going to be fine. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Mayor, that concludes staff's update. We'll be happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. Great. I, I have two. Um, and then I'm happy to share, with, you know, go to the commission. One is, when do we anticipate greater availability of rapid testing? And the second is, are we able to utilize our grant writer in any unusual different capacity at this time? So uh, Jared, and maybe you can help with the first question. Um, I know that uh, there, there are a couple different rapid testing uh, protocols that are coming out. Um, we're actually expecting uh, the 45 minute finger stick blood test to be available early next week uh, to start being available to our community. Uh, what I mean by that is it's starting to come into the area. Now where those are gonna be available, uh, we'll keep an eye out and, and Lynn's team will do a good job at getting that information out to the community. Um, and then as, as uh, Jared had mentioned before, the uh, Abbott test is they're gonna have that uh, very soon. And once they run through their protocols and get that up and running, the hospital will start using that. And that's a 15 minute test. Um, I know that in the press conference uh, from the governor yesterday, he said it was his plan to deploy multiple machines to the South Florida area. And that will, right now we're waiting five to seven days for test results. We should have test results within a half an hour in most cases. Uh, Jarrett, do you have anything additional to that? Yeah, no, I concur with what you said. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, Kat, I know Catherine's on the line our budget and strategy director, uh, I, th their team continues to look for all grant opportunities uh, that are associated with not only this, uh, this event, but uh, anything that would lead to freeing up other funds to put towards this event. Um, Catherine, do you have any updates on, on any grant opportunities and, and do you, uh, anything to share with the commission? Uh, thank you, and thank you, Commission. We are looking at creatively of how to deploy some of our resources to help others, and that's something that we are working, I'm working with Christy on right now. Um, more to come on that, and I have to say thank you very much to the other department directors. They have their staff looking as well uh, for other grant possibilities and bringing it into our our grants coordinator, Kristen Holowicki, as well as Bradley Falcone. What a great time and great initiative that the commission approved last year by having eCivis, which opens up more grant opportunities for us at a federal level. So that has been something that we have really been able to leverage um, and great to have another teammate on the team. So thank you. Great. Uh, and I stepped away to the restroom uh, for a couple of minutes. Frank, did Christy Bartlett already share no, Christy did not. Um, did you have a specific question for her that wasn't covered uh, in the update? You had indicated she was working on uh, potentially uh, some program to help the small businesses in town. Yes, Christy, would you like to bring us up to speed on what's uh, the partnership between us and the chamber and what we're doing for our small businesses? Sure. Um, well, we were supposed to have a biz academy uh, tomorrow in person, but we've changed it to a uh, virtual meeting. So it's going to be online and it's going to be navigating the pandemic. So Alex Falcone, Cindy Brief, and myself will be addressing uh, the different services that are available to local businesses uh, at the state level as well as the federal level. Uh, we are also going to be sending out a survey to businesses to get a baseline for if they are still maintaining operations or um, what's their hiring um, and their employment look like and their purchasing as well. We want to do that on an interim basis over the next uh, several weeks so we can try to see how businesses are being impacted. 
We've updated the EDO website, that's coralspringsedo.com with um, a bunch of resources, both at the state and federal level, as well as some of the local resources that we have available. And of course, we're doing a lot of research to see what other cities are doing to help their small businesses. Um, the CRA can do some business assistant grants and I'll be participating in a webinar from the Florida Redevelopment Agency tomorrow to get some additional information on that. We've also reached out to all local restaurants to find out if they are offering takeout and delivery so we can put that on our website. Um, we have um, put together a group of uh, a list of frequently asked questions uh, for local businesses and we're also reaching out to our economic development professional organizations to determine best practices and see what other organizations are doing. I think everyone's kind of learning as they go and we're trying to use our resources at that professional level to see how we can utilize those to help local businesses. Christy, I don't, I don't know if you covered it or not, but um, we're also doing a, a survey. Did you talk about that? I did, yeah. The survey's a, a quick three-question survey that's gonna go out to local businesses uh, via our MailChimp um, that goes out to all local businesses. We're also gonna put it on social media. Thank you. Great, wonderful. So, you know, along those lines, those business owners that are at home, uh, you can still network. You, you can use Zoom, you can use FaceTime, you can use your email, your phone. Uh, just because we don't have the large events like we've had at the chamber uh, doesn't mean that you can't connect with one another, uh, share ideas, share best practices with you all. Um, uh, I want to repeat something that uh, Dr. Lai had indicated um, when these people are going into the emergency room in the hospital to be vigilant about their history. So I would just urge you all to be paying attention where you're going uh, when you're going, think about what you know might be unusual in your body, uh, including chest pain, whatever it may be, um, and you know not to be nervous, uh, but just to be cautious and conservative. And that's really one of the messages we continue to share with all of our residents uh, is to be calm and be vigilant about following the safer at home order and staying informed with the facts uh, and not you know, uh, and sticking to the facts. So a uh, couple of other things, you know, how do you keep busy during this time? Uh, you might get a little bit stir crazy at home. Uh, you can take a walk. If you're not usually a reader, I suggest you begin to read. Uh, if you love to read, you'll never be bored. I, luckily, I've had one bored moment in my life. Many years ago, award ceremony, my son uh, was at an award ceremony for J.P. Tarabella. Sean, you were the principal at the time. You guys must have called Kyle Nash's name about eight times. You called Patrick once. I was a little bit bored. Uh, but one of the reasons that I'm not bored at this time, besides the jobs, uh, is I love to read. So I would, I would urge you and, and read with your kids. Uh, uh, reading is really wonderful at this time. A couple of other things, uh, Florida courts, uh, at least here in Broward, Palm Beach and Day, they are open. They're doing hearings online. Uh, I had my first hearing online this past Monday, have another one coming up on Friday. Uh, so uh, that's still going on. For those of you that heard the rumor that the courts are closed, that's inaccurate. Courts are open, uh, but it's just members of the public are not coming in, but hearings are being set online through Zoom with the different judges. I want to reiterate something else uh, that was shared earlier today, and that's the use of 211. And to use that hotline uh, as a precautionary measure as well as an emergency measure. So if you're you know, thinking you may not have enough resources, call 211 and they can connect you, hopefully, with resources that you need. I went to BJ's yesterday or two days ago. Uh, very few people there. They're definitely maintaining social distance there keep you six feet away from the cashier and they had poultry, they had meat, they had milk and have any toilet paper. Uh, but most of these goods are there. And if you're at one of these stores and, you know, there are, you know, however many rolls of paper towels, take what you need. I would suggest for the next week and continue not to hoard. Um, uh, again, about tonight's meeting uh, for the Mental Wellness Networking Alliance, you can find that on Facebook by looking up Mental Wellness Networking Alliance, and the website is eliminatethestigma.net. There will be two mental health professionals on the line uh, speaking at least. Those are Dr. Elizabeth King and Carrie Russo. 
And I want to thank Carrie Russo and Jason Hans for, for putting that together. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. Anything else from the commission before we go to the city attorney? And Vice Mayor, you had something? No, I said I'm good, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll go to you, John. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the last item that we have is, uh, as you know, in the fall, we have our, our budget hearings and they can't conflict with the, uh, the, the uh, county school board and a few other uh, agencies. So our first budget hearing will be scheduled September 14, 2020 at 515 PM. So we do have a commission, a uh, regular scheduled commission meeting that Wednesday. So the request was to consider changing that regular meeting to September 14th. So we would have one meeting that week instead of two. And then also um, to approve set, uh, setting a special meeting for Monday, September 21st, 2020, which is the second and final reading of your budget and approval of your budget. So if that uh, is something that the commission is in favor of, uh, we would take a motion to approve those dates. Okay, great. We'll put that out to the commission. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thanks for being proactive, John. Pleasure. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries unanimously. So uh, just before we're about to be adjourned on behalf of our city and our city commission, I uh, want to wish everybody a happy Easter. Uh, Easter will be coming up on Sunday the 12th. Uh, those that celebrate and all those that celebrate Passover, happy Passover. Our next regular meeting will also be virtual. It'll be April 15th at 630. And we are adjourned. We ask you to stay home, stay safe, and stay positive. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.